I haven't got the squeaky thing. I'm squeak. Yeah, everyone stop. Who handed out the squeaky things? You're a monster. You know. So, so I'm really sorry we're running so late. Uh, I will get to that. It has been quite the week. I will say that much. Um, so welcome to EMF 2018. Uh, it's. I'm glad that you're pleased to be here, because I'm not sure I am. Um, it's, so it's really good to see you all here again, um, and it, it has been a bit of a journey this year. Um, I know many of you have been before, some of you are new, um, and I'm John T. I'm one of the organisers, I'm also one of the founders, but I am a very small part of the team that builds this event. We are many, many people. The team organising it is about 40 people. The team building up on site is half of you in this room already. You know how big it is. It, it's, it, everyone takes part, and it takes a lot of work. Um, can I just have a show of hands for everyone who's ever been, who's been to every single EMF event? I'm including Wave here, which is the boat. No cheating. Where, oh, we have me. Um, you know, so, okay, there's not actually that many of you, but you know, thank you very much for coming back, even after everything that's happened. Um, uh, but you are our true believers, and that, that's lovely. Um, so earlier this year, we threw a party for all the volunteers who've ever helped out EMF. Everyone, who, everyone who'd spoken, everyone who'd come and helped build up, everyone who'd helped with a badge, or done, done anything at all. Um, mainly to try and press gang you into helping with this year. Um, and my laptop's turned off. <laughs> Everything works really well at the moment, so uh, has that come back on? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Um, so we threw a party for everyone. And when we did that, we decided to give a bit of a history for everyone who was involved about what happened with EMF, how we got here, why I'm standing on a stage in front of all these people. And it started uh, sort of by accident. Um, Russ and I were supposed to go to Glastonbury, but it was the fallow year, so we couldn't go. Um, and we were like, maybe we'll get like 30 people and we'll go to a field and we'll have some fun. And um, uh, uh, hmm. uh, it we had 499 people, um, which was rather more than we expected. Uh, we almost went broke. Uh, our food vendors ran off the week before because they read our public wiki page. This is why we don't organize everything in public, by the way, because people get scared. Uh, what is just us being a bit disorganized, they read as, we're going broke. And it's like, no, we're just disorganized. Um, but So we had to do all the food ourselves, and then we sold the last ticket the night before opening. Uh, and then people started the BBC showed up, and then people started queuing at the gate, and then the police showed up because they thought it was a rave. Um, <laughs> and um, and it, was, it was kind of a bit baffling, really. Uh, but we had two full stages of content with people who were actually famous and had no idea what was going on. Um, and it was brilliant. And then everyone went, can you do it again, please? And, and, and I'm here again. And it just keeps going. So um, it's, it's a bit complicated. But I mean, that, that year was amazing. 2012, we, we did it on a, a field that almost flooded just outside Milton Keynes. Uh, and we almost didn't get an internet connection because we had a giant radio mast that we couldn't line up because we couldn't see the other radio mast. And in fact, we couldn't even put the radio mast in the right place because we couldn't figure out where to put it. Uh, and we accidentally did it next to, um, to a sewage plant, which we didn't realize. So <laughs> during teardown, the entire place just, just smelled of poo. Um, but no one noticed during the event, so it was great. And everyone thought we'd done this wonderful thing. And, and it actually was pretty stinky. But, uh, and, and we ran a bar under the motorway that for people who were there is like the one thing it was like, can you do the bar under the motorway again? It's like, no, no, we can't. <laughs> we're not even sure that was legal. So you know, it's, but it was pretty cool. Um, the fire under it certainly wasn't legal. Um, it's, but, and then we did another event because we were like, the next year it was the Olympics. And we we're like, Olympics, brilliant, yay. Um, and there was a boat that uh, is converted into a nightclub called the Stubnitz, which is awesome. It's normally in Germany. It does tour around a lot. And they brought it over for a festival in London. And uh, the festival went very, very bankrupt. Uh, and they stranded the boat, because the, the boat couldn't actually, they don't have someone who can drive the boat. Uh, they just get someone in to do it every time they need it moving. So they got stuck. And they just had it stuck in the middle of Canary Wharf for two months. And they were like, do you want to run an event on the boat? And us being complete idiots went, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. This converted German fishing vessel that is just amazing and also never run events on German converted fishing vessels. It's a terrible idea. Um, and after that, everyone's like, are you going to do another one-day event? And every single year we say yes. And this is the year we're not saying yes. Because 
We've tried every single year, and every single time we try and do a one-day event, it falls through. The last time, because the venue, the glass kept exploding in the windows, and that is not a joke. The windows kept exploding, and they couldn't open the venue up, so we're not doing it, and we're never doing another one-day event. So this is every two years, and so make the most of it while you can. Um, uh, and then 2014. We, I can't believe we did three in a row. That seems like madness now. Uh, and we, we went from 499 people to 1,200 people. Um, on an amazing farm, uh, which again was waterlogged, and Russ had to replan the entire site like two weeks before, remove everything around, and it only just about worked. And again, we almost didn't have an internet connection because we had to run massive uh, radio mass again, and that almost didn't work. And Jasper, bless him, had to run around the local village and find anyone who would let us erect a massive mast in their back garden in, regard in return for free tickets because we couldn't afford to pay them. And Again, a local garage let them, and we gave them free tickets, and we don't know if they actually have showed up, but it was, it was, it was amazing. We ran, ran fibre over the top of houses and things, it was brilliant. Um, <laughs> but that was an amazing year. Like we had, we had three stages of content, everyone had a great time, we had f full free childcare the first time, which went down brilliantly. Everyone loved it, we had a great time, the toilets were bad, the toilets are always bad. And, and it, was, it was great, we had, we had a wonderful time. Um, by the way, people, you can pack in the back of the tent if you don't want to be stuck outside. There's a bit more room in here, but you can stay out there if you want. Um, uh, and we were really proud of that event. We'd, like, 2014 was good, but we knew we could do better. And 2016 was pretty good. And I think, how many people were at 2016, just out of interest? Just, <laughs> it's good, right? Um, that was the first year that most of the team actually got to see a talk. So, you know, it's, we left the porter cabins, it was great. So, it's, it, that, we're really proud of what happened with that, that event. So, we, we tried to top it again. Uh, and we had 1,800 people. The villages were amazing. All the villages, like, you stepped up, you showed what you were doing, and we were so happy with that. Uh, and, and someone isn't happy with what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, and yet again, there were basically no complaints apart from exactly 50% of people complained about the toilets. I'm not joking, exactly 50% of the complaints were about the toilets. It was brilliant. So, we heard you. We did hear you on the toilets and we have fixed that. So that, that and everything went through, it was great. And it comes through to this year. So, this year we've been working on pretty much since the last event. We finished the last event and we started planning this one and it's just gone straight through. Uh, we've all worked extremely hard on this. We are all unpaid volunteers. We do this in our free time. Uh, and we're all... So, this is the venue we have always wanted to run this event in. We, we tried to do it here every single year, apart from 2012, because we didn't know what we were doing. But we, we wanted to come back here, but we couldn't, because we couldn't get an internet connection here. And it's been remarkable we managed to do it this year. We have dedicated fiber, uh, fiber? <laughs> dedicated fiber laid to the site this year. We have actual infrastructure installed permanently for us to come back here. So... And given the next two slides, I can't believe I'm about to say this. Assuming everything goes fine, we are here indefinitely. <laughs> but only every two years, to make that very clear. So, so in the, in the, at the party we threw earlier on for volunteers, we had this slide, which, frankly, <laughs> is a curse, and this is why you never do this on slides. <laughs> At the time, we were like, it'll be funny. It's not funny now. So it's, <laughs> it has been the hardest event we've ever done. This has been unbelievably brutal for all of us who worked on it. Uh, we are all broken. Um, this event almost did not happen several times for many different reasons. We, you are only here because the entire team has been heroic. Like, we have been up all night, every night, for weeks now, sorting this out. Um, we have or had almost every single supplier let us down, in some way or other, uh, including one supplier who hasn't delivered the tents they were supposed to deliver, and at one point wasn't delivering any tents at all, including the one you're in. None of the big tops were coming. On Wednesday, at 8 p.m., we had no big tops. We had no stages. 8 p.m. is after all the suppliers have closed, just so you're aware. So, 
it, it, it took a lot of fancy footwork to make this work, and some luck, and some suppliers showing up and actually delivering things that are the wrong things. These stages are a lot smaller than they should be. People who were here last time will realize this is stage A, and stage A is not very big. So we, this tent should be three times the size of the one you're in. The other stages should be about double the size they're in. So we are very sorry. This is out of our control, but the stages are a bit small. You're going to have to pack in. We are likely to drop the sides off these stages so that you can all sit around the outside. It's nice weather. It should be fine. You'll have a lovely time. Don't get sunburned. Um, please, it's, it's bad. Uh, it, it's been... Please be very generous to the volunteers. Be very generous to the org organization team. Um, I know a couple of you have, may have been snapped at earlier on, but it's been really hard on us, and we're all very tired. And at the moment, we're having to deal with a lot of stuff that's still being built. Some of you will have noticed that your village tents are not here yet. Some of them are, some of them are not. They will go up during the day. Please do not put your tent up in an area that's marked out on the floor as where a village tent is going, because you will have a village tent put on top of it. Um, seriously, people have been doing this. I don't know what's wrong with you, but it is. <laughs> um, it, they are going up throughout the day. Please give them enough space to put things up. Um, we are very well aware that people putting up tents uh, like to throw things around a bit, and we'd rather you didn't get injured. Um, we do have an extremely experienced first aid team, but they'd rather not have more people than necessary. Um, all of the village tents will be up by about one o'clock today, which I'm realizing is three minutes from now, so I'm going to change that to three o'clock and see how well that goes. <laughs> um, we're really trying. Um, but the people putting up the village tents Full credit to them. They stepped in at the last minute at five o'clock in the morning the next day. They swapped out their entire tr uh, truck for us to get big tents in to put other stages up that we didn't have. So they are the only reason we have a bar. They are, we have these for other reasons. It's complicated. Please buy me a pint and I'll tell you about it. But, <laughs> but anyway. It's been bad. That's all you really need to know. But things are getting better. Everything is sorted out now, as far as I'm aware. But we are not quite ready. As a result of all of this, as the, tents, the stages are not quite set up as they should be. You will note that while you can all see me, because there's a, a, the ground is rather unlevel, the fact that the ground is rather unlevel means we can't raise the stages up. So we only found that out when the stages got put up, because we didn't know where they would be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The tents have pushed everything back. So, well, is the live transcription even working? I can't see. No, there should be live transcription happening right now. So that will be fixed later on today. Amazing, though, live transcription. Imagine it working. Um, so it's, uh, it's actually, the text is just black. You just can't see it right now. Um, it's, that, that will be on later on uh, due to lovely sponsors. And we have a team of people who are in the US actually doing that live transcription for every single talk, uh, which is amazing. Um, and we're, hopefully the stage will be fitted out. The workshops, I am aware that workshop three is not actually finished yet in any way. It's currently a metal skeleton. You can sit inside it, but you'll look a bit silly. Um, we will move you to another tent temporarily, and we'll point out where that is. That will get built soon. Um, if you've requested AV in your workshops, that will be coming soon as well. As I've said, suppliers have let us down. So anyway, that's all the bad things, and I'm really sorry I had to spend that long on it, but it's worth explaining it all so you understand, and people get like, they're really bad at this. I'm like, no, it wasn't us. It was these other people. Anyway, um, so we're here, and I know! And I, that isn't playing, is it? Is that, is that Cliff, I play it? Hold on. I'm not sure if it's going to play. Yeah. Is that playing? No. Hold, hold on, hold on. I need to move up. Oh, I have to do this. Here we go. Right. We, have a, we had a time-lapse camera from the beginning. So this is a time-lapse of the entire build uh, up to, I think, about an hour ago, thanks to Barney. Um, and you will note that for the majority of this video, there are no tents. <laughs> yes. Um, it is also missing one day due to the terrible mobile coverage, which we also apologize about. We can't do anything about that either. Um, so it, you, at this point, I think we are on Wednesday. This is yesterday. Yesterday is when those tents went up. So that's how far behind we are. So it is, anyway, nice little snapshot of what's been going on. So moving on from that, if that's going to, it's not advancing the slides now, is it? Hold on. This doesn't work as well as I expected. <laughs> How do I get out of this? Uh, uh, I'm pressing escape, but it's not doing anything. Thank you for your advice. 
God damn it. <laughs> We're just going to watch this repeatedly now. Um, I genuinely cannot get this thing to quit. This is very irritating. Oh, here we go. That's good. That's, 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 that's it. Yay! <laughs> I'm so prepared, as you're well aware. Right. So. We have the good stuff. There is, we have put so much effort into this event, I can't even describe. It's, I'm really proud of a lot of what's gone on. Uh, some stuff has come off flawlessly, just not the things that we thought were easy. Um, so, we've done a lot of things. Some of them are very silly. Some of them we did, were told were impossible, but we've done them anyway. The not impossible things. We have t-shirts again. Everyone loves t-shirts. We have a lot more t-shirts than last time because everyone got grumpy with us. So the t-shirts will be available from the bar. So you go to the bar, you buy, you pay a t-shirt for a t-shirt there and you pick it up somewhere else. But t-shirts will be on sale tomorrow. You can pick them up, I think, after 12. We have an area called Null Sector, which some of you may have noticed. There's a lot of shipping containers over there. Um, that won't open until 7 p.m. this evening. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. So it's... <laughs> But uh, there's a lot of people being involved in that. It's going to be quite fun, fingers crossed. Um, I suggest you go and explore after 7 p.m. It will be open until 1.30 a.m. And then it will be open all day, every day after that. Um, there's a lot of stuff going to be going on. The calendar for that will be published in about an hour's time. We're running a little bit late on that as well. Sorry about that. Um, I asked people to, uh, just jokingly in the closing time, the last one, I was like, I like domes. Can you bring more domes? <laughs> and unfortunately, everyone took me seriously. And we have rather more domes than I expected. So I think at last count, there are about 18 domes and more being erected. Um, if you've got any more domes, uh, that's great. But please don't put them very close to everything else, because people are going to pile into them and it'll get really awkward. But thank you for building domes. That's really cool. Um, we have, for the very first time, our own beer. So. We have had a beer brewed specially for us by Milton Brewery. It is called Dynamo. Some of you will see where the name comes from. Um, and it will be available in the bar, which is opening immediately after this talk. Uh, I am aware that we only have one working card reader at the moment because they only arrived about an hour ago. Uh, it just keeps going. Um, it's, uh, so if you go over there after that, maybe give them a few minutes before you start heading straight over. But we have our own beer. I think there's enough that everyone here can have at least two or three points, so that's great. Um, and we have a massive bar as usual. The selection is ridiculous. And we also have a second bar. It's in one of the containers. So you will find that later on this evening. Uh, we have loads of films that are being shown on stage C um, this evening and tomorrow and the day after, obviously. Uh, on Saturday night, we have a very special screening. We have the UK premiere of the new Blu-ray edition of Hackers, because that seems appropriate. Um, we also have the director of Hackers here to be both be interviewed beforehand for your questions. So if you've got questions, so ask him about quite why it looks like that. Um, <laughs> please, please pose them. Uh, and he'll be answering questions afterwards. Uh, and also, uh, Jake Davis, who is also known as Topiary, who was fairly famous for some things that he may have done years ago, um, is interviewing him and also has a prize for the best hacker costume. It is a very good prize. So if any of you would like to uh, put a pager on and then some bad rollerblades, then you know that will work well. Uh, we have a badge. I have to apologize to the badge team, because a couple of years ago, when we were talking about this, Bob and I were like, we should make a pager. We should give everyone a pager. And then we went, but we could build a phone instead. And then we built phones, and now they all hate me. And it took a really long time, and it's been nightmarish. But we have built 2,500 mobile phones from scratch that run open source firmware for you to play with, that run apps. And because we have no mobile phone network, we built our own mobile phone network as well. <laughs> so, right now, we have a GSM network that is fully licensed. We are the smallest mobile network in the UK at the moment. Uh, uh, and I, 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 I'm not joking, we got this off a random man. He just he lent us his license for 500 quid. We don't understand why. <laughs> We don't even know why he has a license, but you know, so, 
but we have our own phone network. The badges connect to it. They all have SIM cards. And after this event, the SIM cards will work anywhere in the world. So you have, a, just for data, but that's still cool. Um, you can get collect your badges tomorrow. <laughs> Being nodded at. Um, however, we would like people who are actually going to write things for the badge. I know not everyone will, but some of you are like, yeah, I want to write things for the badge. If you're really excited about doing that, we do have badges available now. And, oh, later this afternoon. <laughs> I'm trying not to make them angry. Um, uh, we will have a limited number available. I'm not entirely sure how many, but if you would like to go to the info tent, give them your details, and we will get in touch when we have them available, uh, and we will get them out to you as quickly as possible later this afternoon for you to build mobile apps, whatever. Uh, I really want people to hook the badges up to installations that do terrifying things. Uh, they can do DMTF recognition, so you can dial into them and start making robots do things if you want. So someone should do that. Uh, <laughs> we also have essential things to talk about, sorry. I know there's been a lot of essentials, there always is. Um, info booklets weren't quite ready on the front desk when you got here, because they only arrived an hour ago, again. Um, so if you haven't got an info booklet, I know some people have, they're at the info desk, go collect one. They have a full set of information about things you might need to know about the event, a little map on the back, things like that. Uh, there's plenty for everyone, please go and collect one. Uh, we may have to slightly ask you to move your tents at some point if the villagers are in the wrong place. Uh, hopefully not. But just so you're aware, I won't have to ask you to move your villages or tents slightly. We'll see how that goes. The crash is now open for the little ones. Hopefully, the little one that was shouting is already there. Um, <laughs> uh, and that will be open until 7.30 every day. It's half an hour earlier this year because people weren't using it late. Um, but it's also open earlier, so you can get rid of the kids earlier. Um, and the youth workshops will start actually right now. So you can take kids up there and start giving them activities straight away. Uh, Volunteering, we are a volunteer event. You all really need to volunteer, please, just a little bit. Um, just a three hour shift will get you a meal from our volunteer kitchen, which is really excellent food. It, it's worth doing just for that. Uh, you can do all sorts of things, everything from heralding stages to helping out, sitting around the info desk to whatever. The volunteer tent is just up there. It's a big white tent. You'll find it on the map and there's a sign on it as well. Uh, and go in there and they'll find something for you to do. You can also sign up online. Uh, the music license finishes at 1.30 a.m. I'm going to ask you to stop being noisy at one, because that way, anyone who hasn't, we can find them before we get fined. So uh, please really do pay attention to this. It's very bad for us if you play music later than that. Um, last year, everyone was amazing, apart from the people who decided that three minutes before the music license was the time to turn it up to the max and be, play really terrible music. Um, it was funny, but annoying. Uh, <laughs> And also, all the vehicles that are on site, if they're going to be, if they need to be moved before Monday, they need to be off site as quickly as possible. Um, if you have them on site in about two hours' time, we will not allow you to move them until Monday morning. Yes, that too. Yeah, please just get them off the site. So I have one more thing. I always have one more thing. Uh, exactly two other people know about this. So. Which I'm, I'm really proud I managed to keep this a secret because I've been so excited for so long. I've been trying to get good photographs of, of EMF for years, and we've had promises of people flying over and all sorts of stuff. However, this year, I managed to get a friend of a friend at Digital Globe but to mobilize their massive satellite cluster. <laughs> I'm genuinely rubbing my hands together with glee at this point. It's like, this is it's good. So, I can't actually believe they're doing this, and I don't even know how much it would cost to do this. It's ridiculous. But at 10.30 every morning, we have five satellites passing over. <laughs> Each of them will be imaging from different angles, in multispectral multi imaging as well, we will have infrared mapping of where you are. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, and at 2.30 p.m., one satellite on its own, the lonely satellite, will also be passing over again. So I have been informed that their previous record for imaging people at a conference, they did it for a satellite mapping conference, obviously, was 30 people. <laughs> now, I don't know what shapes 2,500 people can form. <laughs> I am going to request they're not that crude. <laughs> yes. 
seriously, this is like a once in a lifetime chance to do this. Come on. <laughs> uh, but I am running a competition for best things seen from space. <laughs> I don't know what the prize is yet, <laughs> but it will be good. I promise. It probably will be space related. Um, so yeah. So at 10:30 in the morning, you've got some. Well, today is a bit late now, unfortunately. But in an hour and a half. There will be a pass going over five satellites again tomorrow and the day after as well, uh, and then tomorrow morning. So it's up to you to plan for this. Uh, I'm really hoping that someone does something really ridiculous for it. I, LEDs probably help? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Um, so, anyway, that's the last thing I have to add. Uh, along with, oh, apart from organizing things, villages and other people and installations and people who are doing random talks and stuff, you can now publish content into the official schedule. I'm sorry that's a bit late. We've been working late on other things. It wasn't important, as important as having tents. So uh, if you look at the website now, you can find out how to publish your schedule for your village and other workshops and things like that. We will prove it within an hour or two and then it'll be live. Uh, and that is absolutely everything. So have fun. Remember that everyone is a volunteer, including you, hopefully. Um, and I will see you in three days' time on the stage again. So we have another talk immediately. And I'm very sorry to that speaker that I've eaten some of your slot. We will run over slightly just by 15 minutes all day, so just be aware of that in this stage anyway. Uh, whoever is the next speaker, can you please immediately come to the front and start talking? <laughs> Have a lovely event. See you soon.